joining us right now with the latest. What's going on with the Redskins and Ron Rivera? Done deal? Yeah, this deal is done. This actually deal has been done for a couple days now, honestly. Ron Rivera would not have taken the flight from California to go meet with the Washington Redskins if they were not way, way down the road. It was just a matter of getting to meet Dan Snyder, which, of course, Ron Rivera had dinner with the Snyders last night at their home, making sure that relationship was going to work. The actual deal has been done. It is done. It's going to be a five-year deal for Ron Rivera to be the Washington Redskins' next head coach. It's not going to be announced probably until tomorrow after the new year to make sure they kind of take advantage of that news cycle, get a little positive buzz in D.C., but this is done. Rivera is going to be the head coach, and next step for him is to go in the building, meet some of these staff members, which he has not done yet, including offensive coordinator Kevin O'Connell, figure out how he wants to proceed on offense, if he wants to keep them, and what his staff with the Redskins is going to look like. And then it's who is going to be the general manager? Is there going to be a new team president? And what is the front office going to look like? Are we hearing anything about the GM? We know, of course, with the Giants, they are retaining David Gettleman. Any news on prospects for that? I mean, that the relationship between Bruce Allen and Dan Snyder was uh, very close. I'm so curious to see where they go and in what direction, if Ron Rivera might have a say. It sounds like he will have significant influence on who the general manager or who the president or whatever structure the front office is. Uh, on, on whoever that is, it's going to be someone Ron Rivera appreciates and likes and can work with. It's unclear which candidates that will be at this point. Obviously, uh, Rivera is going to get in the job first and kind of take a look at that. But that relationship, making sure there is a cohesion, is something that is paramount here because obviously the front office and the coaching staff were simply not on the same page. Uh, in the previous regime in Washington. I'm sure Redskins fans very excited this morning. They're going to start a turnaround, and it starts with Ron Rivera being hired. Ian, thanks for joining us on such short notice with the breaking news out of Washington. Ron Rivera officially the head coach of those Redskins. Back here at the table, we saw this coming. Yeah, we saw this coming. It really started taking place Sunday afternoon, and we knew about it Sunday morning that there was already conversations. But to see it be done this quickly, by Tuesday morning, before even meeting any other candidates, when they're the first ones out of the gate, it shows you how convicted they were in getting this done and Ron Rivera coming in. It's actually a really good fit. I feel like the Redskins the past few years have had some inconsistencies, some instability. And I mentioned it yesterday on the show. If you look at the assistant coaches they've let walk out that building for other jobs, whether it be Sean McVay a couple years back, Kyle Shanahan, same year, or even in, in recent years, you saw Matt LaFleur go from being an assistant coach and then jumping around the league quite a bit. You say, okay, all these guys have left the building and now Jay Gruden's no longer in the building. Let's start anew completely, and you get an adult in the room in Ron Rivera, a leader of men, a two-time coach of the year. I don't know if Ron Rivera is going to be drawing up plays like Sean McVay or Matt LaFleur or any of these young offensive geniuses, but I know that team's going to be disciplined. Right. I know they're going to play for their coach, and I know that he's going to have those players wanting to run uh -huh. through a wall on Sundays. Mm -hmm. How think, big is it that he'll have the input that I asked him about, the input to maybe just have a bigger role than being the head coach or at least have his way with some of the changes that need to be made. I would this not is a fixer-upper a little bit with the West. And I would not be shocked if there's a bit of a brain drain from the Carolina franchise. A lot of those guys are going to be looking for new jobs with a new coach coming in yep. and potentially some different front office moves that are made there. Don't be shocked if you see a lot of Carolina influence up there in Washington. Ron Rivera was very respected by the players, but also beloved by the front office staff. I know a lot of guys would want to leave and will work for him. Yeah, I know a big part of it is going to be the development of Dwayne Haskins, right? That's the number one thing that he wants to try to figure out if this guy is the quarterback for the future and how he can help him elevate his game. The wide receivers, he has some playmakers. If they can stay healthy, this is a really good group of pass catchers. But if you think about the running backs that they have had mm -hmm. in the past in Carolina, mm -hmm. you know, dating back to Jonathan Stewart, D'Angelo Williams, all the way to Christian McCaffrey, the host of running backs that they have with the Redskins, it's a good group. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they're anchored well. As long as he can start to help Dwayne Haskins evolve his game. I know he's happier about the talent that he has on offense, even though they, they have a long way to go. Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin, for sure. Raw tools to work with. And I, I, this feels like the biggest Redskin win in years to me. They won three games this year, and this feels like a massive, massive win. To start off, the Redskins have had some PR issues that Ron Rivera is great with. Like He's beloved in the community. He'll be an incredible face. People will adore him as a human being off the field. And then on the field, he has what I would call like a lack of rigidity. He's flexible. What I mean is 
Look what he did in Carolina. He's like, we got to make Cam work. We got to make Christian McCaffrey into a superstar. We're going to bring in different coordinators. We're going to make this. He's not like, these are my guys, and they always have, and they always will be. If you look at someone, whether it's Haskins or whether it's Geis or McLaurin, like, he will find ways to make them work, maybe at the sake of his own ego. I like that a lot. And he said, like, I want to coach. For the front office, he told Silver, he's like, I want to be in charge of the 53 guys. I want to put the people on the field. You guys can handle that, which is a very refreshing yes, attitude. I feel like it's a big win for the Redskins. He's like a molder of culture, right? He wants it. Do you think that's what was most attractive to him? Like, why did he want this job? A bird in the hand is also very flattering when you get fired four weeks left in the season. and 32 you know, jobs. Coming and, or, and yeah. court you, and you don't have any guarantee you're getting that Giants job. All you're hearing is Matt Rule. And you don't know if the Dallas job is even going to be available for or Cleveland. So when you're out of work and a team comes to you and says, you're our bell of the ball, you're the guy, and we're going to let you write this and draw this up the way you want, and we're yep. going to embrace your family, and you're going to be able to create a culture the way you want to do, blank slate, it's very appealing. I'm sure the money will be fantastic, but that's not why Ron Rivera is taking this job. I think he likes the fact that he can build his organization his way and bring the Redskins back to prominence. Yeah, Kyle, you mentioned uh, the lack of rigidity and the fact that he is flexible as we're seeing the tweet right here. This is a reporter saying that Gerald McCoy says that he would tell Washington players in light of Ron Rivera news it's the greatest thing in their careers that's about to happen. Exactly. And you know what? That speaks to the relationships that he's had in the past with his team. And then the point I was trying to make is that, you know, he might be flexible, great with the media. And on top of that, you know, he, he's a player's coach. You'll, you'll hear players come out and speak highly of him. But don't get it twisted. He's a disciplinarian. Okay. He is no joke. Mm -hmm. You remember when he benched Cam Newton sure. mm -hmm. because Cam didn't have a tie, yeah. I believe it was. Yeah. Um, and for us, sitting at this table, even though we are big fans of Ron, we were like, what the hell are you thinking, dude? You're benching Cam Newton in the prime of Cam Newton because he didn't wear a tie? Mm. You're not going to let that dude slide? Mm -hmm. No, he's not going to let anything slide. And for a team that is searching for culture, that is searching for an identity, that is searching for a direction, you need a guy that can come in, smile, ask you about the wife and kids, hey, how the mm -hmm. little one's doing? But also, if you're messing up, look you in your eye, grab you by your shirt and say, that's not how we do mm -hmm. things around here. Ron Rivera's going to bring it. Dwayne Haskins isn't taking selfies. Not yet. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 he's definitely not doing that with, with Ron. Ron Rivera. No, no. I don't think so. You're right. He did that with a fan, and he should have been out there for Victor formation. I don't think he's doing that. I also think the Redskins are looking for identity. The NFC East is. Did the question of why would Ron Rivera want this job? Okay, Cowboys, who knows? Giants, who knows? He goes nine and seven. Like, this may be a good time to step in, and maybe the future is bright right now. The NFC East is not so hot if you've just been paying attention. Yeah, you know no what doubt. I mean? Big news. We've got our first connection has been made. No yes. Bruce Allen there, but what's up, Teams Cowboys? are swiping left, left, and right here, but we <laughs> haven't even heard if the Cowboys are in the market to look for it yet. It's still – we're now going into this part, and we still haven't even seen if the Cowboys mm. have let Jason Garrett go yet. We heard from our producer during Angry Runs, okay, we do have some breaking news we want to get to. I was for sure thinking, oh, Jason Garrett has been fired or he's been Retain mm. some news is shaking nope. out. Ian Rappaport joining us yet again, and I will ask you yet uh -huh. again, maybe and hopefully for the final time, at least for 2019, here on New Year's Eve, what is the latest with Jason Garrett? And there's still a holding pattern for Jason Garrett as far as the Cowboys go. Now, this is going to go one way. It's not like they're trying to make a decision. They are expected to part ways with Jason Garrett. They're going to be in the market for a new head coach and all of that. But he met very briefly with the Jones family yesterday, and Jerry Jones told Garrett, and Garrett relayed to his staff, that he wants 24 to 48 hours to kind of figure this out, to make sure he's making the right decision, to come to grips with it emotionally, uh, and then basically come out with a firm decision and then start their coaching search. So likely it's today, could also go into Wednesday. Either way, the Cowboys are going in one direction, and that much is very clear. Appreciate you, Ian. Wow, thank you so much back here at the breakfast table. A quick before we head to break, we have so much to get to, of course, here on a New Year's Eve ahead of the wild card. Thoughts on this, Garrett, situation? Fascinated. Fascinated that this hasn't happened yet. Yesterday was a clean day to do it if they were going to do it. And I know that they want to treat Jason Garrett with all the respect in the world. He's looked at as like a son to Jerry Jones. Um, I, to, to meet with him, to have him meet with the players, to not have an answer now. And now the media is not going to be allowed in today. It's New Year's Eve. There will be no media present at the facility. It just seems unorthodox that it wouldn't have just been done clean and easy. After you floated it a couple hours ago. Do you think there's any meat on the bone of Jason Garrett's going to be the coach of the Cowboys next year? Ian, you, Ian has intuition? a lot of conviction. Jay Glazer has a lot of conviction. Uh -huh. Everyone said if it was Super Bowl or bust, like those are people I trust. Until I see Jason Garrett, I mean, for nine years we've been hearing Jason Garrett on the on the uh, you know on the hot seat. Yeah, I know. I am assuming he won't be the coach next year, but there is a one percent chance that some crazy stuff. Happens. Kelsey, they have a host of wide receivers. Nicole Hardman is a baller. Oh, and not to mention, 
Pat Mahomes, mm. former MVP, is just now catching his rhythm. I know we're talking about a lot of teams. We better start talking about the Kansas City Chiefs because they're not playing around, especially that the fact that they gotta sit, they get to sit at home. Nobody's having a better time than them. Nobody had a better day than them on Sunday, right? Melissa Etheridge, Eric Stone Street, <laughs> Paul Rudd. Everybody. The best day was by the Kansas City Chiefs, right? The Ravens are having a very good time, too. The two of them, those one yeah. or two season AFC, are partying. Yeah, they get the first round by, though, and then they see the Patriots lose the same yeah. time. Look, what a time for the Chiefs fan. Let's talk yep. about the NFC, though, and the Vikings. They have to go to New Orleans to battle Drew Brees and the Saints. Uh, winning in the Superdome never is easy, especially in the playoffs, and not many believe that the Vikings can do it. Mike Zimmer 